it was the next encephalitis that is so there you go now speaking about encephalitis first of course we should see central nervous system tissue which is well observable here neurons oligodendrocytes here and there of course vessels there's something wrong with the vessels first because i see that there is infiltrate around these vessels and if we take a look at it closer we may see that this infiltrate appears more like lymphocytic then we should continue further and yes this is even more evident take a look at the cells again how did they appear to you lymphocytes or leukocytes they're positioned right next to the vessels what is this population of darkish bluish cells here which you're observing lymphocytes of course that is completely correct so what we should expect to see in this type of disease is that these lymphocytes are building something like a strict collar around the vessels and there is also perivascular edema here and hemorrhage which is pushing the tissues aside there are vessels which are not always affected by this process we should search for the certain place where encephalitis have affected but what we observe here are majorly those giant vessels next to these the definite color of lymphocytes is enough to determine it as encephalitis what is also important is this picture here Take a look at the cells, they go a little bit apart from each other in its structures. So there is hypoxia here. Cells are suffering lack of oxygen due to this inflammation of vessels. And there is perivascular edema, which you're observing here, strictly with the hemorrhages. So here, the professor will ask you what might be the genesis of this. Uh, these uh, encephalitis depending on the infiltrate of inflammatory cells which are surrounding the vessels what might be the reason for this type of encephalitis viral or bacterial one let's see what the answer is yes viral because we observe color of lymphocytes strictly surrounding the vessels so that's majorly what you should observe here. And also major viral reasons for encephalitis. Do you remember these? Yes, herpes simplex also. Is that all? <laughs> Actually, most types of viruses could perform a encephalitis, especially in people with immune compromise, immune compromised people, and with pure immunity. So they could suffer most of times of very serious inflammation due to some bacterial or vinyl, viral infectant, who is not actually quite dangerous for normal people. Pretty much that's it. Let's continue with the next one.